Hey friends, I'm back from vacation and I'm so excited to talk to you about Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. Oh my goodness, I honestly don't know where to begin. I marked so many pages that I loved, if you can see that. So I talked a little bit about this book in my most recent book haul. It's about a girl named Tess who moves to New York City when she's 22. Um, she kind of leaves her whole life behind, including a lot of people. And she lands a job at a really incredible restaurant, one of the best restaurants in New York City. Um, her roommate just kind of tells her to check it out. And so she goes on a job interview and trains and gets the job. The rest of the book is really about her coming of age story. Um, it's about her figuring out who she is and how she fits into New York City. Um, but truthfully, the most amazing thing about this book is the writing. I was so in awe of just just the language in here. Stephanie Dandler is so amazing with words. So poetic, alluring, beautiful, beautiful language. Um, honestly, it could have ended so many ways and I still would have loved it just because the writing was so good. That said, speaking of ending, obviously not gonna give you any spoilers here, um, but I just wanna note that Sweet Bitter is a very appropriate title rather than bittersweet because it really does start out with her um, learning about all the sweet things of New York City and then it gets very dark or bitter. There are some people on Goodreads and Twitter who are saying they don't like the ending. I felt like the ending was very true to the story. Um, throughout the beginning of the novel especially when she's training at the restaurant, she's learning about different tastes and she's kind of learning to uncover or remember her palette. I felt like this one quote really stays consistent with the ending of the novel. It says, taste, chef said, is all about balance. The sour, the salty, the sweet, the bitter. Now your tongue is coated. A certain connoisseurship of taste, a mark of how you deal with the world, is the ability to relish the bitter, to crave it even the way you do the sweet. I just felt like that quote was so appropriate and so beautiful and really just kind of haunts you as you're reading the book. Um, a little bit of foreshadowing in its own way. So yeah, I kind of just wanted to start off talking about how a lot of people felt like the ending was a little bit you know, unsettling or not satisfying, but I felt like it ended the way it had to. It was unhinged, it was unapologetic and honest. It was bitter in a way. So I feel like Sweet Better was the best title that she could have possibly given this book. I just love this book so much. Um, it's just, it's fragile. You know, there's a sense of it's, it's finite and it just kind of sticks in the back of your brain as you're reading um, or for the sake of consistency at the tip of your tongue while you're reading. Um, and so you just know that there's, that it's, it's so fragile. It feels unsettled. Like you're kind of bracing yourself for a fall, like the whole time that you're reading. So in that sense, the writing isn't surprising in terms of plot. What was surprising to me was the imagery and the detail and just the self-awareness that Tess had. Um, Stephanie Dandler is truly an amazing observer of people and human emotion. Simone, one of the people Tess works with um, at the restaurant, always tells her to pay attention. Simone is just one of the most interesting characters, but I don't wanna jump around to that too quickly. Um, but yeah, so she's telling Tess, she's training her, she's talking to her about wine, and she's constantly telling her to pay attention. And in a way, I feel like that's exactly what this novel is doing. There was something else that um, Simone said that really struck me because I felt like it was exactly what Stephanie Dandler was doing in her writing. Um, let's see, I wrote it down. You need to do more than keep an eye out for incongruity. You have a blind spot for the unraveling whole. I just love that so much because, um, you know, Tess, the main character, is so observant. She is paying attention in so many ways, but it's it's scattered. Um, she's trying to give her attention to too many things, and that's kind of like Stephanie's writing. It touches on so many different emotions and details, and it, it feels so honest and real. Honestly, the dialogue was so realistic. It was very vulgar, I will say. So if you're not into that at all, I wouldn't recommend this book. Um, but I just don't think you could talk about restaurant culture in New York City 
without having curse words or whatever. The characters were just uncomfortably honest. The dialogue, as bizarre as it was at times, just felt almost familiar, even when they were saying things that, you know, maybe you didn't ever have that experience working at a restaurant. These people are irreplaceable in my mind. I don't know, they just felt real and not forced at all. They were weird and obsessive and passionate. There was one scene, Simone says it best again, when she grabs Tess's wrist. She checks her pulse and she says, I know you, I remember you from my youth. You contain multitudes. There is a crush of experience coursing by you and you want to take every experience on the pulse. And it just, she kind of stops in that scene and, and talks about how Tess was just fascinated by Simone because she had never had anyone talk to her that way. Um, and I don't know if you've ever had that experience of meeting someone who says something to you that just really um, sticks with you. That's kind of how the dialogue was throughout this whole book. It was mesmerizing. Even though the characters were so passionate and honest and you know, knew everything there was to know about wine and the symphony and the opera and all of these things that have the potential to be really, really pretentious. Um, while some of them kind of came across that way, I felt like the book as a whole and Tess as a whole, um, it was not pretentious at all. It could have been, but it wasn't. Tess sees things, you know? Um, and I also, I thought it was really interesting because every now and then, she would switch to second person. And that switch was really interesting to me. I couldn't tell if it was like to mimic the advice that she was getting in the restaurant or the philosophies, or was it to show how she'd become sort of unraveled or chaotic and detached um, from the things around her? I'm not sure. I just thought that was really intriguing. In my mind, when it switched to second person, those were the times when she was less aware and more kind of unhinged or frantic toward the end. Of course, I did want to see some character development with Tess, but I also feel like it ended the way it needed to. I also felt like um, the characters as a whole and the people that she talks to specifically or in passing almost, um, they were just so perfectly drawn as New Yorkers in my mind. I felt like they were not only not embarrassed, um, but they weren't surprised by certain events that happened and that to me felt really real. Tess describes one of her coworkers as someone with a lack of any confusion or faith in extenuating circumstances. I felt like that, that to me, little details like that, just little um, sentences like that really paint a picture of New York City in my mind. Also the way she introduces restaurant culture, just the, the industry as a whole. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was just so good. If you've ever worked in a restaurant, I think you're really gonna appreciate this book, especially like a really fancy restaurant. Um, just the things that are said behind closed doors uh, and then the things that are said with the guests. It's not customers, it's the guests. Um, they have a very specific way of doing things, a very specific language and um, it's just really interesting to see how Tess fits into that culture. So I said in my book haul that there was a love triangle. And there kind of is, but it's not at all what you're thinking, probably. Oh, hi, Scout. That's my cat's tail, by the way. She just jumped up here. <laughs> there are relationships that are very blurred. Um, there's dysfunction in those relationships, like severe dysfunction. And I found it really interesting. I found it odd. And I think a lot of people who didn't like this book were probably put off by this strange relationship in the book. But I was totally fascinated the whole way through. I really like should not call this a book review. I should just call this like reading quotes with Molly because I just have so many quotes that I wrote down that were just so beautiful, like the writing, I just can't get over it. Um, I'm just gonna read a few of them. This is something Simone said. Again, loved her character. There was a scene where we got to see her apartment and it was just perfection. I loved it, I loved it. She says, tasting is a farce 
and she said with her eyes closed, nose deep in the bowl of the glass, the only way to get to know a wine is to take a few hours with it. Let it change and then let it change you. That's the only way to learn anything. You have to live with it. On the topic of love, she writes this quote and it's just, it's the perfect timing. She says, you will encounter a fifth taste, umami, uni or sea urchin, anchovies, parmesan, dry aged beef with a casing of mold. It's glutamate. Nothing is a mystery anymore. They make MSG to mimic it. It's the taste of ripeness that's about to ferment. Initially, it serves as a warning, but after a familiarity develops, after you learn its name, that precipice of rot becomes the only flavor worth pursuing, the only line worth testing. I feel like that's the perfect picture of what I mean when I say that it's fragile and finite. There's, um, there's just this sense that nothing can last forever, this precipice of rot, this obsession to chase after love that um, feels wasted or damaged in a way. So yeah, that's those are my thoughts about the book. I know that's really scattered. It's not really a proper book review, but I just wanted to talk about the things that I liked about this book. Um, it's, really, it's really a gorgeous, gorgeous read. It's not for everyone. Um, I totally understand why people don't like this book. It is definitely um, a strange book and it's vulgar and it's unsettling, but it's so raw and emotionally honest and that's all I can ask from any story. I hope you're having a great August and I will check in later. Bye.